YouTube, good morning. Welcome back to the channel, Greg Cloud, IT Pro. In this video, I'll be walking you through Microsoft Sentinel incident response process. So grab that coffee, grab that green tea, or grab a whiskey. It's your choice, because this one's going to get pretty damn juicy. Also, if you can, please drop a comment and a like down below and hit that subscribe button. I'm not asking a lot, I'm just asking you to subscribe, support the channel, look after your boy. Thanks. Microsoft Sentinel Incident Response Procedures. So what is an incident? An incident is defined as a series of events that may compromise the integrity of a large number of systems, multiple organizational zones or networks resulting in catastrophic data loss, prolonged organizational downtime or major financial impact. Normally, the customer's security operations center will continuously work throughout the incident response process as a core component of conducting security monitoring, analysis, and forensic investigation. A typical incident response process enables the SOC to transition from each phase in an operationally sound manner, involving analysis, triage, case management, escalation, and ultimately engaging with the customer's incident response team upon critical and urgent incidents that which may impact the business and operations of the organization or business areas. So how incidents are handled? How are incidents handled with Sentinel? So incidents are created based on alerts, either scheduled or Microsoft creation rules. Incidents can be included in one or multiple alerts. Incidents can be created via a bookmark within the log analytics pane in Sentinel. Um, incidents contain evidence and information that can be further investigated uh, and drilled down into to identify the say computer, the host, uh, the malware, the process, the IP address, um, and these will use the entity mapping function. Incidents can be responded to by threats using an automation like a playbook, for example. So to further understand incidents, we need to look at an incident management lifecycle. Now, this is a typical incident management lifecycle diagram. So we have the first phase, uh, which refers to organizational preparation. So what tools, processes and competencies and readiness needs to be in place before an incident happens. The second phase is detection and analysis. This refers to the activity to detect a security incident and start analyzing the data to confirm the authenticity and severity of the incident. The third phase containment, which focuses on the appropriate actions that should be taken to contain the security incident based on the analysis that was performed in the previous phase. As you can see, there is a cycle between detection and analysis and eradication uh, and remediation. So this happens because sometimes additional analysis may need to be done to fully remediate the security incident. Then the last phase, post-incident activity. This focuses on post-mortem analysis that are, that is sorry uh, performed after the remediation of a security incident. So what happens in the incident? What was compromised? How did it get compromised, etc.? So this is more kind of like a lessons learned phase, which then will drive the changes to phase one preparation. So when you use Sentinel for incident management, you cover all of the tasks pretty much in the diagram. So to help you understand how Sentinel can be used, we look at detection and analysis. So this is where you can use analytics and Sentinel to create custom alerts that will create an incident that once it detects malicious activity. Then once the incident is open, you can investigate it to obtain more details about the malicious activity. Then the containment, eradication, and remediation are kind of grouped together. So after investigating the incident, you can create a playbook to then run and automate your remediation process steps. So this can be useful if you have an example for a VM becomes compromised, so you can isolate that virtual machine to like a network security group or blocking an unusual AD account uh, that has impossible travel, for example.
Next, there are several security definitions that you should be aware of when dealing with an incident and forming that model process for IR. So you have a security event. So this is a change in everyday operations of an asset or device, workstation or server, network, or information technology service indicating that a security policy may have been violated or a security safeguard may have failed. Then you have a security alert. So this is a correlation of security events that are identified together as a security risk. There is then a security incident, which we just covered previously. And then you have HVT. So this is a high value target. So this can be either a person or asset that an attacker or adversary is trying to exploit uh, that person for personal gain. So assets which may contain personally identifiable information, PII, uh, protected um, critical infrastructure information, intellectual property codes such as credit cards or stock trades, or persons who may have business or company plans such as future acquisitions, uh, new or emerging products, uh, competitive products or servicing. So the object of the SOC is to prioritize events where the high value assets or either the target of the source of the alert to conduct further investigation and analysis. Then you have PII, which is personal identifiable information. So this is, this is defined as any information that can be used to distinguish or trace an individual's identity, such as name, national insurance number, date of birth, mother's maiden name, etc., and any other information that is linked or linkable to an individual. Then you have PCI, which I'm pretty sure you're all familiar with, pay card, uh, payment card industry. So this is described as a set of security standards that were de um, developed to protect uh, card information during and after a financial transaction. So with these security definitions in mind, you need to consider an SLO for each object and uh, each incident. So an SLO is a service level object. So within a typical SOC, there are several metrics are reported weekly to management. As part of this process, uh, service level objectives must be defined, measured and reported. So an SLO is a key element of a service level agreement between a service provider and a customer. So while incidents may vary in length of time needed to resolve the issue, there are several metrics that can be defined. So the severity of these metrics can normally be established on four levels. So you have severity one, which is kind of like a critical severity. So this is respond immediately. So this is worked on as the highest matter of a security incident it's until it's completely resolved. So these cases are, are often handled with like a war room, like in Microsoft Teams, which require round the clock response. Then you have severity two, which is kind of like a major security incident. So this kind of needs to be resolved within 10 minutes of triage. Uh, and this also needs to be worked on as a matter of high severity until it's completely resolved. So these are handled at any time of the day or night as they are detected or reported, but after initial triage may be delayed until business hours if appropriate. You then have severity three, a 60 minute moderate window of triage. So this is worked on urgently during business hours until resolved. And then you have severity four, which is kind of like a minor severity incident. This is 24 hours of triage, which is worked on best efforts during business hours until resolved. So if we just have a quick look at a typical SLO notification response table. So we'll go from severity one to four. There are various differentials of what type of security event uh, goes with what type of SLO, when it's delivered and how it's delivered. So this is the top table here. So I won't talk through all of them, uh, but we'll go through some of the top. So you can see here, severity one, who does it go to? All SOC analysts, uh, incident response team, SOC manager, director of security, CISO. So these are the ones that are the critical high, you know, let's get this done, let's get it solved. Uh, and then we have severity two, you know, as you just covered, these are high incidents, but you can see it doesn't include the director of IT security or the CISO because in their eyes, they don't need to be notified. It's not life changing. 
Then we have severity three. You know, this goes to all psych analysts, again, IR, but this is the 60 minutes, you know, how is it delivered? Uh, we just go to Teams or an email, text, not really bothered about it. Uh, and then we go severity four. This just goes to the SOC analysts and the management. So the lowest severity, the less inclusions from the company execs and role levels. Again, this applies for how the frequent uh, notifications are presented as well as the delivery of this. So you can see from severity one, everybody's involved. Uh, when is it delivered? Absolutely immediately. And then subsequent notifications every 15 minutes. How is this delivered? Uh, which everything via pigeon as well if you want um you send that pigeon send a greyhound i don't know whatever's going on whatever form of delivery you can do um get it sent and then asset and containment so an incident may be contained or quarantined to keep it from spreading uh, to prevent further damage or loss of service from occurring so during this phase um effort should be taken to keep potential evidence intact or balancing the need of the system owner and the incident investigator in some cases it may be necessary to either remove the system from the attacker's ability to access it or to contain it in some way that is not detectable so failure in this regard can result in serious damage to the system and related infrastructure as the attacker recognizes the actions you are taking. So it is important to consider that some attacks may cause additional damage when contained or quarantined. So the SOC should not assume that because a host has been removed from the network, further damage to the host has been prevented. So there is some containment considerations, you know, is the incident currently going on? What is the business impact? Is stolen information stored on the system? If so, is the system being monitored by the attacker and there may be an automated routine to delete evidence which will most likely destroy the system? Does the containment strategy affect our ability to preserve evidence? What effect does the strategy have on the service availability, uh, network connectivity, service providers, external parties, etc.? And then what is the duration of this solution? Emergency workaround, temporary workaround, permanent workaround, etc. So one thing which I've learned is uh, never ever rush into containment. Uh, it is very tempting and natural to want to pull out all the cables, shut down the systems, uh, when you see an attack, um, but this can be a mistake. Um, rarely this turns out to be a good strategy. More often, you will undermine the incident response process, destroy evidence, and essentially warn the attacker. Ultimately, the decision should be taken by the incident manager, so your plan needs to support them. However, you also need to remember that during the stress of incident response, don't add it to by panicking about the containment. So one point to remember as a human, you can never react as fast as a computer. So this means waiting longer is likely to make things considerably worse. So containment guidance without warning. So without the warning out of the way, how do we do this? Unfortunately, there is no one-size-fits-all answer for this. Um, so you have to begin by finding out as much as possible. Gather information about the incident, like in the steps at the above and what we just went through. Then you need to analyze the incident as much as you need. Make sure you cover every angle, com cover every single aspect of what that incident is doing and understand what it's affecting. So this can be more art than science, but obviously experience improves things along the way. So your incident manager should try to focus on the investigation to minimize suspicious activity. So that wraps up this little video on incident response with Microsoft Sentinel. Thanks for watching the video. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you don't, well, that's just fine. Please subscribe, tell your friends, tell your family, 
Till you man. Cheers.